Hey guys, Wes here. So I've had a few requests lately to look at Firebase and I've been playing with some React lately so I thought it would be kind of fun to build a simple application using React and uh, Firebase. So in this video we're going to build a simple note taking app. So yeah, hopefully this will be fun and um, yeah, let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at the application we'll be building in this video. So you can see we have a basic uh, React and Firebase to-do list application here. So we'll be using React to build out our front end um, in which we have this sort of flex box um, layout with um, a list of to-do items here in the middle which is scrollable and then a sort of sticky header and footer with the header just providing the title of the application and the footer here providing a form for us to add new notes. So in fact, if I add a new note here and click add, then you can see that it gets posted to the bottom of our list here. And in fact, if I reload the application, you'll notice that the data um, persists. So this new note that we just added um, persists as the application stops and starts or, or reloads. And this is, of course, provided by Firebase. You'll also notice that we have some X's here that when we hover over, um, we can see that they're clickable. And so if we just go ahead and remove these, you can see that these items get removed from our list. And then if I reload the page again, you'll notice that the state of our application, at least in terms of the data here, persist again, and those items are removed. So yeah, we have a very simple application where we have the ability to add and remove items from a list here. So let's take a look very quickly before we get started at coding this up at the Firebase backend. So I'm just gonna head over to the Firebase console and I'm gonna click on the demo database for this demo. And then over here on the left, I'm just gonna select database and we'll be able to see here that we have a notes child in our database with a number of other uh, child elements here, each of which represent the notes that we see on our screen here. For instance, this top note here, which says complete React and Firebase video, and if I click the X here, you'll see that Firebase responds immediately and removes that uh, child element from um, the notes collection here. And of course, I put another note in here, so say like get to work and click add note, you can see that Firebase also immediately adds this new note to the list of notes. So yeah, this is kind of a, a fun application to build and it's actually quite useful. Um, simple as it is, I can see myself using this as a simple to-do list. So I think it's great that we can build something relatively uh, simple and useful together in this video. So let's take a look at what it will take to get this thing wired up. Okay, so at your command line, uh, the first thing that we need to check is that you have Node installed. Um, so go ahead and type in Node V. And if you don't see a version echo out to the command line here, you're going to want to go ahead and install Node. So for that, just go ahead and head over to nodejs.org and download the latest stable version of Node. And if you're on Windows, um, it should get put in your path so that you can use it from the command line. Um, if not, just make sure that it is in your path. And if you're on Mac or Linux, go ahead and just use your uh, preferred package manager, and then you should be good to go. So the next thing that we want to do is actually install a utility called Create React App. So once Node is installed, you should have access to the NPM package manager. And then we're going to install globally um, Create React App. And this little command line utility is actually going to be used for us to be able to scaffold out new React applications. Um, and it's really useful because it sort of provides everything we need to get going. Um, in that sense, it's very similar to something like the Angular CLI if you are coming from Angular. Okay, now what we can do is just use create react app to scaffold out our new application. So we'll use create react app and we'll just call this react notes. And so it's going to create a new uh, directory called react notes in the uh, current directory that you run this in. Um, you may want to make sure that you're in your um, projects directory if you have one. All right, once Create React App has finished doing its thing, you should see this happy hacking message here and a message about how you can start the development server and build your application. Um, so we'll actually just go ahead and CD into the new directory. And let's just take a look at what we have inside the directory. So you can see we have a readme, um, a node modules directory, a source directory, package.json, and a git ignore and a public directory here. 
Um, so the structure looks pretty standard for a, a, a new application, and most of the work that we'll be doing will actually take place inside the source directory. Um, before we do that though, let's go ahead and install a, a necessary dependency for this project. So we'll say npm install save Firebase. Because of course we'll be using Firebase as our, as our backend. Okay, once that's complete, um, what I'll do is just go ahead and run npm start here. And what this should do is actually start up a little development server for us to check our application out. And you'll see that it'll start on port 3000 of localhost and you should see this welcome to react with a little spinning react logo and a message that tells us that uh, we should edit our app.js. So let's go ahead and open up uh, a text editor. So for this video, I'll be using Visual Studio Code, uh, but of course, just use whatever editor um, you're most comfortable with. And we're gonna take a look at the structure of our project. So we'll open a folder here, and we'll open our React Notes uh, directory that we just created, so it's this one in my case. And so you can see we have a source directory here, so let's go ahead and open that directory. And inside, you'll notice that we have um, a few different files here. So let's take a look at this app.js file. So here you can see at the top of the file, we have this import React and component from React. And we're importing the logo and we're importing a style sheet here. And then you can see we have this class app extends component. And then we have a render method in here, which is returning something that looks a little bit like HTML. And so this file that we're looking at here is actually JSX, which is essentially a JavaScript that allows us to add um, XML to our script. And so what you see here is looking again a lot like HTML. There's a few uh, differences here. Of course, this is XML syntax, so there are some nuances there. Also, anytime we're adding classes to DOM elements here, we're, we're going to be needing to use the uh, class name rather than uh, class because class is, of course, a reserved keyword in JavaScript. And yeah, you also notice that we have um, a sort of templating type feature here where um, in this case, for instance, the source for the image is being pulled uh, from logo here. And you can see that logo is pointing here to this SVG file that's in this directory. Um, so if we just change something simple here, so welcome to notes, and we take a look at the page, we can see that it updates. And so what we're looking at here is essentially just a very small React component. And components are really sort of what are at the core of um, the way that we'll design applications in React. And basically a component just represents a small reusable piece of code that we can sort of reason about independent of other components. And so yeah, in this way, we can kind of think about all the different parts of our user interface in isolation and essentially create the building blocks for the way that our users interact with our application. And you'll often hear um, that React has basically two types of components. We have presentation components or container components. And so presentation components will basically just be concerned with the way that things look to the user on, in your application and um, container components are concerned with the way that things work. So container components will basically um, sort of provide data or have a particular type of behavior and you know they may provide that behavior or data to another presentation component while the presentation components um, essentially just receive data via props that we'll look at in a little while here. This differentiation um, here is basically just a, sort of a way for us to separate uh, concerns and I think uh, this will make more sense as we um, build out this example and will even make more sense as you build other React applications in the future. So if we just think about the structure of the application that we'll be building, it's, it's a to-do list and it basically has kind of two parts. We have the notes themselves and then we have the form that posts the notes. And we could abstract that out a little bit more perhaps, and maybe we can refactor that. But essentially, yeah, we have two parts. We have a way to input the, the, the notes in our to-do list and the display of those notes. And so what I'm gonna do is under our source directory, I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder. And the first one I'm gonna create is just called note. And so I'm gonna create a new folder for each component that we have in our application. And we'll just start out with two here. So we'll create one for note, and I'm gonna create one here for note form. And then under each of these, I'm gonna create a JSX file. So under note, we'll have a note.jsx, and under note form, we'll have a note form.jsx. 
And then we'll also have style sheets for each of these. So under note, we'll have a uh, note.css. And the same for note form. So we'll have a note form.css. So let's first uh, go into our note.jsx file here. And we're going to go ahead and import React and uh, component here in curly braces from React. Then I'm going to import the style sheet. So we'll import from this directory note.css. And then here I'm going to import prop types from prop types. And we'll look at prop types in more detail in a minute here, but it will basically allow us to provide some type checking on the properties that we pass our components. And so what I'd like to do here is create a new class called note, and we'll say that it extends component. And so component is actually an abstract base class provided by React. And so our class note will extend this component based class. And so when we create a constructor here, so we'll, let's say we create a constructor and we can pass it some props. We'll then need to call uh, super and props to pass these props to the uh, parent class. And then our component here will have a method called render um, to which we can pass the props and render inside of render here we can actually just return what we place inside of return here will in a sense represent what gets injected into the dom when render is called so let's just say we put a div here and uh, we'll put a heading tag in here and we can say hello from the note component and in fact here maybe um, in our constructor We'll say something like uh, this dot message is equal to yeah. We'll just tuck it in here. So we'll say hello from the note component, and then inside of our h1 tag here, we can place uh, this dot message. And then back in our app.js file, we click there. Um, let's just go ahead and remove what's in here. Maybe at the the top here, we'll have something like React and Firebase to-do list and then we're actually going to make a call to our note component so here we'll just say note and we'll just go ahead and close that tag and I'm going to surround this in a div and I'll surround uh, I'll tuck our h1 in here as well so we're, we're going to return this div and then we're going to inject the note component here um, inside of it underneath of our other heading here and so now that we're using note I actually need to import it here so we'll import note from this directory slash note slash note and we'll surround this in quotes and then actually back at our note.jsx file we need to make sure that we export this class as well so we can export default note and exporting default will allow us to uh, import it in our app.js uh, file without curly braces here because we're just exporting um, this class from our node.jsx file. And the last thing that I'm going to do here is um, type our prop types. So I can say note.prop uh, types. And we don't have any props coming into our note yet here, but this is where we would put them. Um, but we need to place this here for the time being. So we'll look back at this in a minute. Let's go ahead and take a look at what our application looks like so far. So you can see we have our React and Firebase to-do list heading, and then we have this hello from the note component heading below it. Um, so you can see, of course, that that's coming from our note component and the um, application heading here, if you will, is coming from our app.js file. So you can already kind of see the structure of a React application that we have these components that we can then return inside of other components and yes yeah, so we can sort of like structure our application and nest components within each other in this way. So let's do this first. Let's go head back to the note.jsx file and we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, contents of the div in our return here and then up in our constructor what I'm going to do is um, let's change this dot message to this dot uh, note content and we'll have another property here that we'll call this dot note ID and let's pull both of these from the props that we pass our constructor here so we'll say props dot note content and on note ID here we'll say props dot note ID and then down in our render method here which of course we are passing these props let's uh, apply a class to our sort of container div here for the note and we'll say uh, class name is equal to note uh, fade in 
and we'll apply these CSS uh, classes in just a moment here. And then inside of this div here, we'll have a paragraph tag with a class name of note content. And here we'll put out the uh, this.note content. And so you can see this.note content is coming from our prop. And now let's go ahead and uh, type that type that prop. So um, we'll go ahead and just un in our note.prop types object here, we're going to have a note content. Um, and we'll set that to prop types dot string. And then if we head back up into our app.js file here, um, where we have note, now this is how we're actually going to pass props into this note so that this component can use it. But we know that we're going to have multiple notes and that each of those notes are going to have some different properties like note content and note ID. Um, so we'll start it out here by just saying note content is equal to something and note ID is equal to something. And um, in fact, we know that since there will be multiple notes here, um, React is going to want us to put a, a sort of index or a key, which is sort of a special prop that we need to apply to any array of elements. Um, so we'll also have a key here. And before we sort of fill those in, we need to sort of figure out um, where they'll be coming from in a sense. So the first thing that we should do is actually create a constructor for our app component. So we'll create a constructor here, which itself can take props. And again, we'll make a call to uh, super. And then we're going to have something called this.state. So each of our components um, in this application will have a state. And we're not going to do anything too complex with state. Um, in a future video, we may look at, say, like flux patterns, for instance, or Redux. But um, for this video, we're going to keep it relatively simple. Although um, by the end, we'll be at a point where it may be worthwhile to actually refactor this um, using some sort of uh, flux design pattern. But for now, we're going to keep things relatively simple. And so we'll have this.state, and in here we'll have a notes array. Um, but yeah, so inside of our this.state here, we are uh, going to set up the React state of our component. Just make some comments here so that you can refer to them um, as we're going along because we're going to be moving relatively quickly. So since we have an array of notes here, we can actually use JavaScript's map method to basically map the note content ID and key for each note in this array. So inside of our notes array here, let's go ahead and create those. So we'll have, let's just do uh, two simple objects here. And each of these objects will have an ID and note content. So I'm just going to copy and paste this for the second one. We'll give it another ID and another note content. So you can probably see where this is going. Down in our return here, what we can do is map our notes array here to a series of note components in our return. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Um, we're going to actually create a wrapper div here. So um, we'll just use the existing div tags that we have. And I'm going to apply a class name of notes wrapper. And then we'll kind of template out our template here very briefly as well. So we'll have a class name of notes header. And we'll tuck our uh, heading into that div. And I'll swap the h1 tags out for another div with a class name of heading. Then we'll wrap the notes section with a uh, class name of notes body. So div class name notes body. And we'll tuck that inside of this div. And then we haven't talked about the, the input form yet, but we'll create a footer here to place that form called notes footer. And for now, we'll just say footer will go here. Okay, but inside of our notes body is where we want to map that notes array. And so I'm going to tuck that inside curly braces here. And what I'm going to say is this.state.notes.map. And we'll create an arrow function here for note. And what we'll do is go ahead and tuck note inside of here. And what we want to do is actually uh, return our arrow function here, um, the note. And now we can assign note content to note dot note content and note ID to note dot ID, which is the other property we have on our note. And then the key will actually also assign to the note ID. So I have this uh, note ID prop here um, so that we can actually use it to send back up to Firebase a message that we want to delete this note by a particular ID um, because we're not going to be able to use the key, which is a special prop um, that React uh, requires for us to have on this array of notes. Um, but it's not one that we can use to sort of like uh, send 
in a method that we use a call for Firebase for, for instance. So that'll make more sense here in a minute. Um, but yeah, you can see that basically we just use this uh, map method here to map each of the notes in our notes array um, into a note component. And with that, let's go ahead and just take a look at our application. So yeah, so you can see that um, it's pretty bare bones still, but we see each of the notes from our array coming out into our sort of notes section. So now we have uh, sort of the very basic functionality of displaying data from our application onto the page here. We're already making some good progress. So next I'd like to go ahead and just apply some styles to our application because I think it's a little bit more fun to develop against something that looks a little bit nicer. So let's head into our app.css file. So let's go ahead and just delete everything that's already in here. This was all just CSS provided by Create React App. Um, we won't be using any of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste in the uh, CSS that I have here for our application. And I'm gonna scroll up slowly that, so that you can see it. But just in case you'd like to copy it manually, it, it, it actually isn't that much. Um, and you can just take a look at it here. So you'll notice that one thing we're using here is a background image and I'm pointing to a JPEG image which should be in a static directory. So let's go ahead and actually just create that now. So under uh, source, we'll create a new folder called static. And then inside of static, I'll create a new folder called IMG where we can store different images. And I'm just gonna drag a handful of different images down there into our image directory here. Okay, the next thing I'd like to do is very briefly head over to Google Fonts to select a font for our application. So the first thing I'll do is select a font for the header for our application. And for that, I'm gonna use a sort of cursive typeface called Permanent Marker. So we'll add this to our collection. And then for the other fonts in the body, we'll simply use this Lotto font. So I'll add that to our collection. And for this, I'm going to actually go ahead and select this uh, import syntax. And, and yeah, then over in actually our index.css file, um, so I can just remove this body selector, I'm gonna replace that with our import that we pulled down from our Google fonts. So now we have the ability to use the Lotto and permanent marker fonts. So we'll head now into our note.css style sheet, and again, I'll paste some CSS here, and again, it will be available on my GitHub. Um, otherwise, feel free to copy it here. And lastly, just so we can finish out all the CSS uh, very quickly, if you head into noteform.css, I will also paste the CSS for our note input form as well. So um, I'm not going to go into uh, too much detail about the CSS. It is all uh, relatively straightforward. You can see um, in our note.css file, for instance, we have a class note, which I see is actually using a Droid Sans font here. Let's just say we'll use Lato. And yeah, nothing uh, really too fancy. We have kind of a nice box shadow. You can adjust the opacity if you like. And then we've got some uh, CSS animations here for fade in. I'm actually not implementing fade out, but that's something you could implement if you wish. Yeah, so just have a simple fade in here from zero opacity to one and for a very short duration. And then I'm just doing a little bit of styling on the note content and the close button. Now in our app.css, there's of course a little bit more going on. We have a body with a linear gradient applied over an image, and we are going to be using Flexbox here to sort of give us the, the column layout, first of all, and also allowing us to keep the notes header at the top of the page um, and the notes body in the middle with an overflow of auto, so we'll get some scrolling there, and the notes footer at the bottom of the page. Okay, in any case, let's take a look at what the application looks like now. So it's already looking a lot cleaner. We have the heading here and we have our two notes here wrapped in some more decent styling. Of course, if you look closely, we have um, our footer message getting put out in the footer, but we don't actually have the form here yet. So let's work on that. So we'll come back into our app.js file and we'll go ahead and replace our footer with our uh, note form component. So we'll just type note form here and we'll pass it some props in just a minute here. First, let's go into our noteform.jsx file and we're gonna import React again. So React and component from React. And then we'll import our style sheet. So import from this folder, noteform.css. Now, once again, we'll have a sort of functional component here. So we'll have a, a noteform extends component and we'll have a constructor. A constructor will take our props 
and we'll pass them to the uh, parent component here. And let's create a placeholder for this dot state to represent the state of this note form component. And then we'll write our render method. And in here we'll return just a, a simple uh, text input form essentially. And so we'll have an input and I'm going to give that a class name of note input. And for right now we'll just have a placeholder value where we'll say like write a new note. And then we'll have a button with a class name of note button. And we'll, we'll wire up an on click event here in a moment. But for now, we'll just have a simple button that does nothing yet. It just says add note. And we'll, we'll apply a class to the div wrapper as well. We'll say class name is equal to form wrapper. And then of course, we need to make sure to export this class. And then back in our app.js file, uh, we do need to remember to import note form as well. So under import note, I'm also going to import note form from uh, this directory slash note form slash note form. And now let's take a look at our page. All right, uh, we have the uh, note form down here. It looks like our button didn't get the correct styling. So let's head back. And I think I just called this something different. All right, if we head actually back into our note form.css, I call it post button, because we're gonna post a note, but we'll call it note button, because I think that's what I called it on the page here. All right, so let's go back, take a look at our page now with that corrected. And yeah, that's looking a lot better. So right now it doesn't do anything, but we can type in a note here. And um, yeah, we just got the styling kind of worked out. So let's think about how we're actually going to wire up some functionality to this form. So I'm going to go back to the code here. I'm going to close out some of the CSS files here. And now what I would like to do is inside of our note form.jsx, um, actually inside of our input tag here, we already have a placeholder and we can see that that's working properly. So we get this placeholder text when nothing is input into the form. But I'd also like to add now something to hold the value of this form. And so we'll say value is equal to this dot state dot new note content because of course uh, we want the state of this form to be something that is related to this component. And so inside of our state object here, we'll set new note content just equal to an empty string. So when a new note form gets created, it's a new note content will just be empty. And so when the user starts typing into this form, we need the component to kind of know like what it's doing, like what's happening. In fact, if you try to type in now, you'll notice that we can't type in anything. That's because its state should just be an empty string. And in fact, if I set this equal to something, we can see that its state will be something and we can't change it. Go ahead and delete that. But what we're wanting to do is to actually handle some user input. And let's go ahead and bind an on change event here to handle user input. So we'll just um, have a method called handle user input. And we'll write it here. So just above our render function, we'll call it handle user input. It has an event. And in other words, when uh, the user starts typing, we need to set the state of this component. So we'll say this dot set state. And we're going to change a uh, new note content here. And rather than be empty string, we want it to correspond to what the user is typing. So we're going to say e.target.value, which will be uh, the value of the uh, text input, of course. And so again, just to continue commenting these methods for the sake of following along, set the new note content to the value of what's in the input box. So let's look at the page now. All right, so when I'm typing here, um, I can now type. You can see that we're actually getting a type error though. Um, when I type into this box, it says cannot read property set state of undefined. And so we're calling set state on this. Um, and this is actually something to be aware of. So this, um, at this point in time, is probably actually just referring to like the DOM element of this input maybe. Um, in any case, we need it to refer to uh, the component. And so inside of our constructor, we need to bind our handle user input to this, in other words, to this component. So we can do that like this. So we'll say this dot handle user input is equal to this dot handle user input dot bind this. Let's take a look at the page now. 
and let's type. Okay, and this will work just fine. In fact, we can kind of take a look if we were to say console log uh, this inside of uh, handle user input. So console.log this, and we inspect. And so now when we, we'll head over to the console. So let's go ahead and start typing. And yeah, so now you can see this is equal to this note form. And um, if we weren't to bind it, just by commenting this out, and head back and as I start to type here um, you can see that we got this undefined so this is undefined um, unless we are to bind it so it's not even it's not even uh, the sort of parent element in this case so we need to explicitly bind our handle user input okay so now that our text input is kind of wired up let's wire up this button and so instead of an on change event here we're going to have an on click event and we'll write another method for that so this dot uh, write note for instance and I'll just clean this up a little bit and so we'll have a method for this as well and so we know the first thing we need to do is actually somehow like call a method that sets the note content for a note to uh, the value of the input and so we know we're going to be calling this dot set state again in fact we may um, be well off to write a method to update the state but in any case we'll just put it in here and we're going to set new note content back to an empty string of course once we are completing um, th whatever this method is here so we're going to then uh, set new note content uh, back to an empty string and of course that's just to empty out the input box once write note takes place which happens on the click event on this button so let's go ahead and first of all, we'll bind this write note method to our component. And since this method that's going to be adding a note to essentially our notes array, which if you recall, currently lives inside of our app component, we should just go ahead and create the method for adding an element to that array inside of the app component since that's that component's concern and we can actually call that method that we write in the app component down here in this child component. So that'll make more sense here in a minute, but let's go back into app.js and we're gonna write a new method here. And I'm gonna write it just above render, but we're gonna have the ability to add a note and we'll pass it a note object. And then here we are going to push the note onto the notes array. So we can say this.state.notes.push note and in a minute our notes array won't live hard-coded here in our component but of course will be supplied by our firebase backend and so we'll get to that very shortly but for now let's just um, say that we're going to push it onto this uh, notes array here and so now that we have this add note method let's go ahead and actually pass it as a prop um, to our note form component so we'll say add note and it's going to be equal to this dot add note and then down in our note form again in noteform.jsx in our write note method um, before we empty out the text box we can call this.props which we have add note on now and we need to pass it an instance of a note so we'll say this.state dot new note content and then back in our app.js file up in our add note method, we actually, if you recall, we need to actually bind this as well. So when we call this in add note, it's referring to our component here. Let's go ahead and do that in our constructor. So this dot add note is equal to this dot add note dot bind this. And let's fix add note actually so that it updates the current state of our notes. So we can say like uh, constant uh, previous notes is equal to this.state.notes and then we can push our note onto our previous notes and then we can say this.state.notes is equal to previous notes and of course we need to call that inside of this.setState and here we just say notes 
And then of course we don't actually want to push this note, which is actually just a string of note content onto our notes array, which contains a, uh, a set of notes objects. So we'll just go ahead and construct a sort of mock object here using that note content. So we'll just go ahead and make an ID now, which we'll say is like previous notes dot length plus one. And the note content should be equal to the um, note param here. Okay, so you wouldn't want to do anything like this for real, but we're actually going to replace this with our Firebase code in just a few moments here. But let's go ahead and take a look at it working here with just some hard-coded strings. So now if I type in a new note, we should get it posted here. And you can see that I'm still actually, uh, I need to get rid of some console logging here. Um, but yeah, we got a new note and like another. And so, yeah, so we're adding new notes to our notes array and it's getting displayed here on the page. Now if I refresh, of course these will go away. There's nothing to persist that data. The two that we see here, they're hard coded into our notes array. When the application starts, we set the state with these two note objects. But anything that we're adding, of course, that is just sort of ephemeral data that's going away. So the first thing I'm gonna do is delete some of our console logging. I think that that is in our note form. Go ahead and remove uh, console.log on this. And then back in app.js, let's go ahead and wire up Firebase. So Firebase is essentially a backend as a service. It is an application development platform that does a number of really cool things. First of all, it provides us with a database that we can use. We can interact with it using a number of different uh, programming languages out of the box. And it's in the cloud, meaning we don't have to set up any of this on our own. We just simply sign up for an account. There is a free tier that we can use to develop with and, um, and sort of play with which is of course what we'll be using in this video. It also offers us the ability to do some authentication using a number of different authentication means. Um, that's something I intend on looking at in a future video. So let's head over to Firebase. Um, and so you'll need to go ahead and sign in and you're gonna want to click go to console. And once this loads, we're gonna go ahead and just add a project. Um, we're gonna do a brand new one here and let's call it uh, React Notes. And just select the country that you are closest to or living in. And so we're going to create the project. And yeah, you can see a number of different things over here. All we're gonna do is actually use the database. But in order for us to use the database, we need to um, sort of wire it up to our application, of course. And so that's gonna be handled using some configuration that Firebase will provide for us. So what I'd like to do to prepare for that is to keep this window open, um, just minimize it, and we'll go back to our code here. And then I wanna create a new directory in our source directory. Um, and we're gonna just call this config. And what I'm gonna do is create a new file in here called config.js. And we'll leave this empty for a minute. And then let's go back to Firebase. And then you're gonna select this add Firebase to your web app. And this is gonna bring up a code snippet that you're gonna to wanna to copy to your clipboard. Now, this contains your API key as well as um, your database URL. So you will, of course, want to make sure that you keep this information secret you know, to yourself and not checked into any sort of version control. So we'll go ahead and copy this, and then we'll come back to our um, config.js, and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it here, but we're not going to use these script tags, obviously, and so we can delete these, and we're not going to want the initialize app call in here. All we're gonna to wanna to do is basically just export this. So we're gonna export it as a constant, and I'm just gonna call it dbconfig. And so now we can head back into app.js, and we can import that config here. So we'll go ahead and import dbconfig, from and then we'll just um, provide the path to that config which in our case is config slash config and finally we'll import firebase from firebase slash app now i'm going to go ahead and clear out our notes array um, this way when our application starts we should have no notes in our list and in our app constructor here what i'm going to do is um, we'll go ahead and create this.app and we'll say firebase.initializeapp and we'll pass it our config. 
And then what I want to do is m make a reference to a database, if you will, on Firebase. And so we'll uh, store it here. So we'll say this.db is equal to this.app.database. And then we need to call .ref and .child. And we're going to name our child uh, notes. So we're going to have a list of notes that we store in, um, essentially have a reference to in our this.db property here. So this app refers to, of course, our application, so for which we have a configuration for. Ref gets us a reference to the location to which we will be writing queries, and we will have a notes child, which we will use to store instances of our notes object. So we want all of this to happen when an instance of our application essentially mounts to the DOM. And so in React, components have a lifecycle. And so we have access to various lifecycle methods that we can call in our component here, such that they happen like at a certain point in this component's lifecycle. So they're just sort of basic lifecycle hooks. You may be familiar with like ng on init or ng on changes, things like that from Angular, a very similar concept here. So basically there are certain things that we want to do to prepare the uh, component before it mounts. And there are certain things that we might want to do to get triggered when the component changes or is removed from the DOM as well. So I believe that the current order of operations, if you will, for when a new instance of a component gets created is that its uh, constructor gets called first. And then we have a method called component will mount. And then the render method gets called on the component. And then we have a component did mount method. So in our case, we want to do something before the component mounts, but after we sort of set it up in our constructor. So we're going to go ahead and put some logic inside our component will mount method. And so here we're going to go ahead and store a constant uh, previous notes, we'll call it. And we're going to set this equal to this.state.notes. Oops, sorry, previous notes. And I'm going to uh, remove what is inside of add note. For now, um, just so we don't get confused uh, with our previous method of adding a note. So yeah, this may make uh, more sense as we continue, but previous notes um, is called as such because essentially any time after the component mounts, you know, we will be re referring to the notes in that state as a set of previous notes. And so when the component will mount, we're going to set uh, this constant here. And we're going to use some Firebase now. So what we'll say is this.database.on child added. So whenever a child gets added to our uh, notes database, we can write an arrow function here. So snap will represent a snapshot of that database. We're going to push something from that database, notably uh, the snapshot of the new note onto our previous notes array. So the ID will be equal to the snapshot key, um, which will actually correspond to the uh, new ID that uh, which is sort of like a unique ID that Firebase will provide us and then the note content of course we can look at calling val on the snapshot and then grabbing the note content from that so in Firebase anytime we read data from our database we receive that data in in the form of a um, what's called a data snapshot object and this is what's passed to our event callbacks and we can, in fact, inspect that data by using this val method. So we're not going to be looking at any more sort of complicated queries um, against Firebase. I'd like to cover that in a separate video because I do find it really interesting, especially as someone coming from a relational database background and just looking at the difference in syntax and functionality between querying, um, say, using SQL versus using a more document-based database like Firebase. So for now, anyway, we're just going to be grabbing the key off of this uh, data snapshot and the note content from the value of uh, the data that's in this data snapshot. Okay, so once we've pushed um, this new note onto our previous notes array, we need to update the state of the component. And so if you recall, we're just going to call this.setState. And we're going to set uh, notes, which is um, part of our state um, to previous notes because that is the array that we just updated. So when a new child is added to our notes database, we are going to get a snapshot of that data in return here. And so we're going to grab the unique key off of it and we're going to grab the note content off of it and we're basically pushing that onto this previous notes array, which is at the time uh, set to the current uh, state of that array. And then we're going to update that state 
with the new array. And so you might be asking now, well, how do we trigger um, getting a child added to our database? So let's rewrite our add note method now to do that. So before we were just um, basically pushing a note um, onto our uh, notes array here that was just typed. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use Firebase. We're going to just uh, simply say this.database.push and then we're going to dot set and we're going to set the note content equal to what we passed this method which if you recall is coming from our input form and is actually just what the user types into the input box and so we're going to set that equal to the note content for a new note so this guy's going to get a key and it's going to have a note content and it's going to get um, pushed on to our set of notes that are in our notes database on Firebase so that's pretty cool and one more thing I think we forgot to do here is if we scroll back to the top, um, first of all, we can remove the reference to the uh, logo, which we're not using. And um, in addition to importing Firebase from Firebase slash app, we also need to import uh, Firebase slash database. Okay, and with that, let's go back to our application and see what it looks like. All right, so you can see that the to-do list is now gone. Um, let's see what happens when we try to post a new note. So let's say uh, finish first proto of react to do app. Okay, so we clicked add note, but we're not seeing anything here on the page. So let's go ahead and right click and we'll select inspect and we'll head down to the console here. So you can see we're getting a permission denied error. So this is actually a pretty common mistake. It's something that I actually made uh, the first time I was playing with Firebase. And what we're, what, what's happening here is that Firebase is saying, well, I'm not going to allow just anyone to write to our database um, because, of course, we don't have any authentication set up. Um, we don't actually need to set up authentication. For development purposes, we're actually just going to turn it all off and allow us to publicly read and write from this database. So not something you would ever conceive of doing outside of just a simple development environment, but it's going to work great for our case. So let's head back into the Firebase console. Go ahead and close this. And then we're going to select database. You can see we have nothing in it yet. Let's go ahead and select rules. And you can see that we have this uh, rules object here with dot read and dot write. And we'll say, and it says like auth uh, not equal to null, auth not equal to null. We're gonna turn both of these simply to true. Now what this is doing, as I just mentioned, is it's actually just allowing unauthenticated access to your database. So at this point, if anyone has your uh, configuration and knows the uh, connection string to this database, they can just um, publish as much as they want or read as much as they want. Um, so again, don't do this outside of um, development. I go ahead and publish. And in fact, Google gives you the warning here that your security rules are public. So that's good. Let's see if we're allowed to post now. So I'm going to minimize this and come back to our application. Go ahead and refresh the page here to get rid of the error. And now we'll post again. Finish first proto of React to do app. OK, and you can see we get an error here. So let's go ahead and fix that. It says that cannot read property push of undefined. And I can see we just have a typo here. So you can see I say the previous notes is equal to this, that state dot note. This should be notes, of course. And let's go see if that fixed our issue. So we'll go ahead and refresh the page. And yeah, you can see that we have a note here in our to-do list. Let's see if we can add another note. So um, I don't know, go for a run. So we'll add this note. And you can see that that now gets added to our to-do list. And we don't have any errors in the console. And yeah, so it looks like we're actually wired up and talking to Firebase. So if you've made it this far, congrats. You now have your front end wired up to a back end in the cloud um, using React with Firebase. So, so far so good. Um, if you refresh, you'll notice that everything is persisting here. And in fact, if we split this into two screens again and we head over to our database um, and yeah, click on data. And if you expand notes here, close out our console and let's go ahead and write a new note and so let's say like kickboxing class and we click enter you can see that that gets put under notes as well 
So I was really impressed at how quickly uh, Firebase responds and just how easy it is in a sense to actually wire up um, React's front end to this uh, Firebase app that's running in the cloud. So if you ask me, a to-do list is really not very useful unless you're able to cross items off of it. And so we need some functionality now to be able to remove items from this list uh, when we complete them. And so to do that, we need to send a message to Firebase that says, hey, I need to delete this item. And then uh, we need to tell our front end to, in a sense, re-read what's happening on our database and then update the state of our DOM to match. So that shouldn't be too difficult. Let's go back into the code and take a look at how to wire that up. So we have this on child added event. We're going to go ahead and um, do something again for on child removed. And so we'll make a call to this dot database dot on child removed. There are other events, of course. There is um, um, an event that you would call if you were going to update an element, for instance. In any case, we're going, it's going to look very similar because we're going to get a data snapshot back. And now, rather than simply pushing an item onto an array and updating the state of this, uh, of this component, we actually need to somehow identify the item that we're trying to remove and then um, tell Firebase, hey, remove the item that uh, corresponds to the item that I just clicked on my front end. So we're going to identify that item using the, um, using the note ID property. And we're going to write some simple JavaScript here to basically splice out that item from our previous notes array. So that will look like this. So we need to get all the items in our array. And then we need to write a conditional here that says if this uh, previous notes ID at, a, at, a, at this particular index is equal to the key that's on the database snapshot that gets returned, then go ahead and splice that out of this previous notes array. And once that's done, we're going to go ahead and update the state again. So I'm just going to copy and paste this here. So this um, a little bit of duplicated code. Um, we're not going to do any refactoring here just to keep it uh, simple for right now. So this component is sort of listening um, for now when a child gets removed from our database. And what we're going to do is say, um, hey, when this child removed event occurs, in which case we're going to get a data snapshot in return, what we're going to do is loop through our previous notes array and for any instance in that array where the ID is equal to the key that comes back in this data snapshot, splice that out of our previous notes array. So the splice syntax here is saying, um, the first argument here is saying at this uh, particular index, and then the one here is the number of items to delete at this index, which in our case will just be, of course, one. And then, of course, uh, just update the state to this uh, new previous notes array that we've created once we've uh, spliced out the item that we're looking for. So just as you may have wondered how we triggered this child added event, um, you can probably figure out by now how we're going to trigger this child removed event. So we had this add note method, and now we're going to create a, a remove note method. And we just need to pass the note ID in this case, since that is um, how we'll be querying for it um, when we're talking to Firebase. And the syntax for that will just be this.database.child note ID dot remove. So Firebase makes this like ridiculously simple. So where will remove note get called from now? Well, um, if you recall back in our note component here, we have a box that contains our note content. So what I'd like to do is actually to put an X in this box here. Um, that, that we can click and then send that event back up into our app component that can then tell Firebase to remove this particular instance. So I've already got the CSS pasted in uh, note.css. So what I'd like to do here is just to put a span in with a class name of close button. Again, for which I already have CSS written. And we'll say on click. And now we need to have a method this dot, we'll write one called handle remove note. And of course, we'll need to pass that the note ID. And we'll close the span. And I'm going to format this a little bit more nicely here. And you can put an X here, you can put, I don't know, anything here. I'm just going to say and time. 
and we'll have the uh, multiplication symbol. Now you should be uh, fairly used to what's happening by now. So we need to write a uh, handle remove note. So we'll say handle remove note. That gets passed an ID and um, we are going to access it via some props. So we're going to pass um, remove note from our app.js down into this component. And we're going to call it with the ID that we pass it from the particular note for which we are clicking the, uh, the span that contains this uh, multiplication sign on. And so uh, we're able to use this. We need to go ahead and bind it in our constructor to this component. So this dot handle remove note sql this dot handle remove note dot bind this okay so back up in our app.js we'll scroll down to where we have our note component called out and we need to pass it one more prop here which is remove note and we set it equal to this dot remove note method okay and i'm just going to clean this up as well so we are passing our this.remove note method down into our note so that it can call it. And then uh, in that note, we receive that method on our props so that we can call another method here, handle remove note, that gets called when we click on uh, the multiplication symbol here um, to remove that note by the ID that's on the particular instance of this note. So we already handled. Um, getting the note ID when we built this component out and now we can just use it to uh, remove that note using um, Firebase's dot remove method. So yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, one thing you'll want to notice is that we have an arrow function here um, for our on click event. If I were to just uh, say this dot handle remove uh, note, then this is actually going to get evaluated every time a new note is instantiated on our page, which is going to be, um, you know, however many notes that we have, and then handle remove note is going to get called um, automatically, which will just remove our notes. So we don't, we don't want that to happen automatically. We only want it to execute um, when on click is called, or, you know, evaluate, if you will, when on click is called. And so we need to um, write it such that it will um, get evaluated in that fashion. Okay, so let's take a look and make sure that's working in our application. So you can see that we have X's here now, and if we click on one, um, you notice that we get an error. So it says here, cannot read property child of undefined. So let's go ahead into app.js and see what the error is here. And one way that we can kind of debug this is we can throw a console.log here inside of our remove note method and we can say like from the parent and we'll say our note ID to see if this is getting evaluated at all. We'll come back to our app and we'll open up the inspector and click something here and so yeah we're getting the ID um, up from the parent so that looks correct but it must be the case that um, this that database is what is undefined here. So it looks like we need to bind that correctly. So let's go back down into our code. And we'll go into our note component, actually. And if you see what happens here, this is actually a mistake I warned against earlier, is that we need to bind uh, things to the components that in which they're called. So just as we bound this that add note, we need to bind this that remove note. Um, because the this that we're referring to here is the one on which we have a database defined, obviously. And so when we call remove note, we need our um, note component here to have reference to um, that this, such that when it passes the ID back up into our app.js, this is referring to, again, the um, app.js component, which has a database defined on it. So let's go ahead and uh, refresh our page here. And we'll go ahead and try to click X again. Okay, and you can see that it gets removed. So we'll refresh the page and our array persists. So if we take a look back again over at Firebase, go ahead and add another few notes. We can see them get added over here on the right in Firebase. 
and in fact if we click the X button we can see them start to get removed in Firebase as well. So yeah, so that's it. Um, we have uh, some simple CRUD operations here, everything except for update. So I'll leave it to you to um, figure out how to edit notes. It will be um, pretty straightforward. If you take a look at the Firebase docs, you'll see um, how to check when a child is updated and you should be able to write a simple method for that in our application. The other thing you might want to think about doing is taking a look at the flux pattern, which is often used with React. It's a really, I think, a really powerful design pattern for managing state and it will come in really handy for um, applications like the one we've built here. But yeah, this code will be up on GitHub. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you upload your code to GitHub, I'd be happy to check out your repository if you make improvements on it or have questions about it. And let me know if there are other application ideas you'd like to see me make a video for. So yeah, that about wraps up this video. I'll see you guys next time.